All right, this is OXDF, and I'm um, catching up on some email today. Um, and uh, kind of, I got a bunch of old emails I'm trying to get through. Um, really sorry if I'm bad at writing back to emails, but uh, I got this email from uh, QUI 13, 113X um, almost two months ago, sad to say. Uh, and uh, basically, they were pointing out um, some issue they're having with my Pwn script. Um, and let's see. So if I come over here to OXDF, um, let's pull up Calamity. This is an older box. Uh, so let's see, this is, see in the link here, um, box number 37 on Hack the Box, um, released in 2017. I guarantee that is not the retire date. I bet my script forked that. I got to fix that. Um, but let's see. Uh, so there's a pwn step in here. I'm guessing down at the root. Here's an exploit. Yep, I'm showing. Yeah, so here's my pwn script down here. Um, we have multiple stages and things. Um, cool. Okay, so they're saying the person who's writing me here is saying uh, they're running to an issue. Um, it's re search vulnerable pointer at in the response, and then it's it's searching for groups. So it's trying to catch this, uh, trying to catch the first item. So whatever this address is, and then it's turning it into an int and a buffer address, um, and it's getting no object. None type has no object groups. So basically, this 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 re is failing to hit. Um, so let's check it out. I thought uh, I have no idea if I'm actually going to publish this uh, video, but I thought I'd start recording just to see if it turned out to be an interesting video. Um, so I I did bring the box up already. Um, let's see, is it up? Can I bring it? Yeah. Okay. So it's up. And uh, if I just do Python three, well, let's see, is it Python three? That's the first question. Uh, I know some. I had some trouble with Pwn tools. Took a while to switch to Python two. Um, so let's see what I call it. Root Pwn .py. Okay, I did label it as Python three, so I expect it to work in Python three. Um, let's just run it and see what happens here. Uh, Python three root Pwn .py. See if we have the same issue. Um, yeah, it looks like we're getting the same error that the. The other, the person pointed out to me here, same error. Um, so something must have changed since I did this originally. Um, also getting a bunch of stuff. This is this is new in the Python three stuff where it's, it's you know let's see so we can clean that stuff up too. Uh, so let's see sixteen. So basically it's basically when I send uh, fn, I can just do dot encode, and when I send a two here, I can make this bytes. Um, what else was I? 20, 16, 18, 26, 28, whoa, uh, 26, 28, like that. So, and basically when you're sending things, you should send bytes, not, not ASCII. Um, Pwn Tools is, will try to do it for you, but it would, it, you know, it's warning you that it's, uh, it could be ugly, so always good to clean that stuff up. Okay, so back to line 33. Um, so if I, if I go to line 33 here, I can see where it's trying to do find vulnerable pointer at. Um, so there is a receive of 4096 bytes. Um, I do decode that, which might be dangerous, um, but I guess I need to do that in order to do our regex on it. Um, so what I'm going to do here is, uh, I should probably make this bigger. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this with PDB. So I import PDB, and then I can do dash C to give a PDB command. I will break at 33, and I'll give another command to continue so it doesn't just hang at the beginning. And now it's going to run to uh, line 33. So it is, um, you know, I should note, I, I didn't, I've been going really quickly through this. I haven't actually looked, but it looks like this is a local um, binary that I am, ex I've got an SSH connection here. Um, and so then I'm going to connect there, and then I'm going to, with the SSH, start a process called good luck. And that's what I'm interacting with. Um, so that's when all these good luck receive, good luck sends. Um, they're going over the SSH connection and then, uh, you know, interacting with that process. So let's go back here. Line 33. Uh, okay, so right here I'm working with response. Let's see what the response is. Um, okay, so it looks like it's getting to the menu. Uh, this is where I'm doing some, I wrote this a long time ago, so I'm going to criticize myself here. Um, I'm doing a lot of receive 
you know, 4096s, which is fine, but it means that, like if like, one packet comes in, often it'll read up to 4096 and then move on to the next one. Um, so I'm doing a send line of three here. Almost certainly I'm trying to do an admin login. Um, and I bet you if I do a, um, let's see, good, oops, whoa, undo that. Uh, let's go down to this terminal. If I do a good luck dot receive again, and receive all. Um, that can work. I may have lost my, I may not have worked fast enough here. Let's, let's start this again. Um, I bet if I do a good luck receive right away, there's more data that's going to come in. Um, let's do another 4096. Maybe not. Um, you know, I didn't stop to check and see if response was, um, was response include this. So this time response actually has all this stuff in it. So um, the person did say it was intermittent. Um, so if I do good luck dot receive 4096 now, but then, you know, I can see the rest of it was there um, queued up. So the packets had left the target host, had come back through the SSH channel, and were sitting on my box buffered and waiting to be received. Um, and so it seems like, for whatever reason, the way this is sent is inconsistent to the point that sometimes I'm reading in a full, I'm reading in everything I expected to be, like this, let's see, where is it? Um, sometimes, somewhere in here, it's reading in everything I want it to, but other times it's not getting the response. So then when I get down to here to do my regex search, um, the vulnerable pointer is at may or may not be in this response buffer. And so what I really want to do is, I think, let's comment this out and make this a little bit cleaner. And we can just do response equals good luck dot receive until, which is a really nice function you get with Pwn tools. And then we want, oops. So we'll put that in there and we'll you need to put put it in quotes or bytes actually. And now so let's just for if I do look at response, when I when I don't get the whole thing, that's why when I do um jumping ahead of, to fixing it, but that's why when I do this, it returns none. And so when that returns none, now when I try to get a group off of it, it there's an error. Um so instead, what I'm going to do now with this new receive until, let's run that and see what happens. Now, when I do response, it still doesn't have the file name. Interesting. How does that happen? Did I not save? That would explain it if I didn't save. Um, oh, my breakpoint's at the wrong place now. Um, because I've been breaking on 33, but now 33 is not a line that actually has a thing in it, so we have to break out of there again. Um, 34. And response is going to be, is going to have the full message in there. Can I get the, does this work? Um, cannot use the string pattern on, oh, because I need to decode it, just like I did before. That's not how I would probably do this today, but let's just run with it since that's what I had there. Oops. My hands are getting faster than my Tmux. Let's see. We connect. We feel pretty confident that response is going to have what we need. Um, so we can look, you know, just individual. So if we do this regex search here, we're going to get that. Uh, if we want to pull the group itself, we're going to get that address, and so then we convert that into an integer of 16 using base 16. So now we have it, now we have this buffer address. Um, you know, we could do something like Does that work. No, is it P64? I was screw. I always mess those up. Um, also, I think I'm off by one, two, three, one, two. If I need that. Argument is not an integer. Oh, it, is my, it was U64. Anyway. Um, oh, but not 64. This is a 32, I bet. Or this might be a digression that I just don't need to worry about. Okay, I'm not. Never mind. Ignore that. Um, this works fine um, for now. 
So that works. Let's continue. That just do I work? And root. I got a shell. Um, cool. So ignore that the one digression. But basically, um, when you're doing exploits like this, especially where you're doing a lot of interaction, what what I really should do? It's kind of lazy to have these good luck receive forty ninety sixes in here. Um, I'm kind of making the assumption that what I need to get is going to come back in that 4096 bytes. Um, but targets can be weird. Um, when you make a call to send something over a socket, if you do a call a send call two or three times, it's not inconceivable that the OS, so that's going to buffer at the OS down, you know, you're going to send that down to the OS and the OS is going to handle putting packets on the wire. And it may sometimes, you know, not apparently not predictably, choose, you know, if you've got three sends in a row, it might group all those into one into one uh, packet, or it might send them individually. Um, there could be some delay, and just trying to do a receive, receive tries to get up to 4096 bytes, but if there's like a break in there, it can stop, and then there can be more data that's sitting here waiting. So what you really want to do for this kind of stuff, where you know, exactly, you know, well, you know, when I send in four, the next thing is going to come back as a prompt for something, right? Or when I send in three, it's going to send back prompt for file name, is just make sure instead of receive some number um, with Pwn tools, use this receive until function. So receive until and then give it the prompt you're expecting back. And that's going to make sure you read everything you're expecting to get back. Um, it's not super important on these first ones here, but again, for this one, it's really important because I'm expecting a certain amount of data. You know, when I go to, um, oops, slow run. Uh, zoom, there we go. When, uh, when I go to this next thing, I'm expecting that the vulnerable pointer is at is in this response. And if, if I'm just doing guessing on lengths here, um, I might have missed that. Um, and so receive until is just a solid way to do that. And it's probably the way you want to go. Um, so um, I think this is looking good. Uh, let's get out of this, get out of this. Oh, get out of this. Quit. Let's run it without PDB once, just a couple times, just to make sure it works okay. Rootphone.py, it's getting in there, it's writing an exploit to the file, and then it's giving me interactive mode, it works beautifully. Uh, I'll run it a couple more times just to make sure. And nice. So that's going to be our fix for today. Um, big thanks to, uh, um, let's see, let's go back to the, big thanks to, uh, QUI 113X for sending this in. I really appreciate um, when people see things that are not working on the blog, if they can send it to me and I can get it fixed. Um, I'm not the greatest at keeping up with the email, but I will get to them eventually. So um, thank you so much and uh, appreciate you sticking around to the end of this one. Um, let me know if this kind of stuff is useful. It's not really solving a CTF challenge per se, but it's um, you know showing how I troubleshoot things. Um, so let me know in the comments if that's a useful video or if you want me to just stick to solutions of challenges. Uh, and uh, with that, thanks so much. And I'll talk to you next time.